One of the biggest things about being a DJ or music producer is your network. A lot of being in the music industry and music business is about who you know and not what you know, unfortunately. So what do you need to do to grow your network? Didn't Paul Agao say in the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, your network is your net worth. So how do you start building your network? Today, I wanna to share some tips for DJs and producers on how to build your network and how to build more friends in the industry. Let's do this. Networking with the right people can change your career. This can be from meeting an A&R to getting your music signed. It can be from meeting a club booker and a festival promoter to getting more DJ gigs. It can be also from meeting people behind the scenes. It's like publicists to help you grow your reach or people in the media like myself or other peers and vocalists. Meeting the right people behind the scenes can actually skyrocket your career. A lot of this industry is about making friends and as I've said so many times in these videos, friends help friends. So let's split this into two sections, online and offline networking. Let's start with online. The key platforms to connect with people in dance music are still Instagram, definitely Discord, definitely Facebook and LinkedIn. I still think Facebook because a lot of the higher up people in the industry are a lot older and their age demographic is a little older. So therefore they still use Facebook and they're always on Facebook to start off with. I'm gonna quickly mention Discord servers because they're great for networking. And our Discord is absolutely epic. Our shared head community in my Discord server is so exciting and so banging. There's so many DJs, producers that have all made friends with each other, people are collaborating with each other, and you should definitely join it. There's nearly 3,000 DJs and producers in there. We've got vocalists in there. You should definitely become a shed head and join our Discord. The link is in the description. Come and join us and be part of our Discord community. There are also so many great Discord servers out there. Labels have them. DJs have them. There's other communities in there. Literally go to your favorite labels and your favorite artists and search into their links in bio and see if they've got communities. They're so great for connecting with other people, other DJs, and connecting with actually with labels themselves as well. In our Discord recently, we actually had a collaboration. Tom Brownlow connect, collaborated with The Goddess Music, and we actually released that track on Data Transmission. It's called Lifeline, and it's out right now. And that all became because they met in our Discord and created this track together, which we actually signed on our demo streams, which are on these YouTube channels on Mondays and Wednesdays. So get in Discord servers now, they're really cool. Still the biggest platform for networking in dance music is Instagram. But when it comes to Instagram, who do you want to work with? Who do you want to connect with? Who is the right person for you? Let's start right at the start. What are your goals for reaching out? Are you trying to get records signed? Are you trying to get club gigs? Are you trying to play for festivals? Start working out what you're trying to achieve from people before you even start trying to talk to them and trying to find those people. Is it because you're making similar music to that artist and they're potentially one of your peers and you want that artist to start playing your music first and foremost? Maybe you'll get a video of them playing the record and essentially then you would send that to a label and because you have that bigger package, someone's playing the music, there's an audience, that might help get the record signed. Maybe that bigger act has their own label and you're trying to get the record signed to them first and foremost. Does your brand align with that person you're reaching out to? Do you need to spend a bit more time working on your brand, what you look like online before you even start reaching out to them and take a little bit more time, have a little bit more patience because then when you do start reaching out, it's gonna align with them a lot more easier. And also, are you actually in a similar music space? Have you done your research? Are you trying to reach out to a promoter because you want them to book you for their shows and their parties and their club gigs and their festivals? Well, a lot of promoters, when you speak to them, will definitely say, come to my show, come and hang out first. But if you can't do that because you're in a different town, city, country, then it's definitely about connecting online first. So now you've worked out who you want to connect with, what is the next step? And it's about starting a conversation. Do something that starts that conversation. Maybe it's replying to something simple, like replying to someone's story going, oh, I've been there, or I've done that, or great record, or that looks fun, or something human that connects you something really, really simple. Please, please, please don't spam as your first interaction. Don't just spam artists with your new music. I actually had someone come into my DMs the other day. All they did was they sent this track, and I just sent them WhatsApp emoji like this. What am I supposed to do with it? What would you like me to do with that track? And they were like, oh, I'd like you to listen to it. It might be right for Data Transmissions labels. But well, why didn't you say that straight away? If you're sending music with a purpose, i.e. you're sending it to a DJ, maybe you want them to play it, then say that. Hey, I'm into your sets. We play the same music. I've got this new track. I think it might be fit for your sets. I wanted to give you exclusively. I'm only sending it out to a couple of people and I'd love for you to just play it and see what you think. That's a much better approach than just spamming out a beatport link and hitting in a hope. Think about it from their side. What will they want you to do? As the bigger artist, they're gonna want music that no one else has got. They're gonna want music that makes their sets different to everyone else. And especially if it's your new banger that you tested, you maybe watched one of their online sets or their SoundCloud mixes and you know it fits in the same sound. And then you sit and go, I've got this new track. I've been working on it for a bit. I've had some good responses. and I think it will fit your sets. That's a much, much nicer approach than just here's a beatport link. Because no one's buying that beatport link. 
they're probably just ignoring you. And also when it comes to sending music, do this sending process months and months and months ahead of the release. If you just start getting played and start getting little videos, that's gonna help the promotion process. You can save all those videos up for when the track drops. If you're only starting the process as the tracks drop in, this is actually too late for your promotion. You want these people playing the track months in advance. So what releases have you got that are signed today that are coming out three, four, five, six months from now? Start sending those out to DJs and start getting those ones played because your process should start today. And whenever you're trying to get anything in this music business, I say to my students on the course so much, try and reduce the friction. Make it as easy as possible for someone to say yes. Give them all the information. Do all the hard work. I've actually had email conversations where I'm four or five emails into a conversation with someone and I have no idea what they're trying to get from me or what they're trying to achieve. Don't say something that can be turned said in five emails that can be said in one. People's times are very limited and if you have a busy schedule, then sometimes you only get one email to get the message across. Also, people don't read anything these days. So if you're trying to say it in a page, say it in a half a page bullet point things, give people the headlines, make it as easy as possible to read, understand in as short a space of time possible. The last thing I want to say coming to the networking, there is going to be tons of rejections. People are going to say no, and it's how you deal with those rejections that's going to really help you and really stand you forward on where you're going next. Be courteous to someone, say thank you, and is it all right to send you some more music in the future? I'd love to try and work with you in the future. And then keep the conversation going in between periods. Again, go back to the reply to stories, go back to the kind of messaging back and forth, and build this friendship with somebody, whoever you're trying to get something from, build it over a long period of time. I promise you it will work out for you. Let's talk about in-person networking and offline networking when you actually meet people. The big one for this when it comes to electronic music and dance music is clubs and festivals and hanging out at events, venturing out of the studio and leaving the home offices and the studios to go and meet actual people. I know, scary, right? I remember when I was building data transmission, I would pick certain club nights that I wanted to go to because I needed to network with certain people. For me, it was about meeting managers that have multiple artists. An artist will have a management team and they'll have a booking manager team, those managers and booking teams will work with multiple acts. So if you went to certain events where you knew you could get a little bit more backstage because it wasn't the biggest artist, but they also had a manager that worked with bigger artists, so you'd go to maybe two, three, four tier down on the roster, you could maybe get backstage because it's a bit easier because there's less people trying to be in that backstage. And then essentially you could meet the managers, the booking agents, because they were all still at that person's gigs. You then have a good chat with them backstage and essentially you'd start coming to work with some of the artists and then you'd work up the ladder to working with the bigger artists. But essentially by meeting that one person, then you've unlocked maybe five, six, seven, sometimes 10 artists just from one meeting. So I tell you like a game, can I find the red diamond in the shed that unlocked those eight artists? What was the path I want to get to? And essentially trying to unlock things. So back then I'd study lineups, I would look at who's playing, I'd then go to their Facebook pages back then, because if you go to Facebook pages, the about section on Facebook page still has loads of information about who the manager is, who the bookings are, and the contact details. And then I'd work out which booking agents are the the big ones and which ones had loads of teams and also the same with management companies and then I'd work out which artists are on those rosters and try and meet those people backstage and that's how I plan my nights out and then when I went on a night out even as a non-smoker I would still go into the smoking area there are still tons of people in this injury that smoke let's face it and you can meet them in smoking areas and especially if you know what they look like because you've done a bit of background research you'll find them in those areas the other one in this scene is the afters now you do not need to go to an afters to get land deals have there been big deals landed in after parties yes which if you think about it, is super scary that some of the biggest deals in the world have been done at after parties where people are, let's face it, a little bit inebriated and business has actually happened there. But as I say, it's not necessary to go to them. You can still do the business and you can still meet people at the party and you don't need to put yourself in a position where you need to go and hang out till stupid o'clock in the morning, damaging your health and your mental health. But every now and again, it's definitely worth popping to one. Meet people at the rave, get an email address, get a phone number, continue the conversation offline when you get back to the office. It's definitely better business and it's definitely kind of more professional. The other great place to network is networking events. Places like Amsterdam Dance Event, IMS Ibiza, Brighton Music Conference, Berlin Dance Music Event, and Winter Music Conference. And there are a whole host of other networking conference events throughout the years in different countries. I've spoken in depth about different conferences and networking events, and I've got a playlist of those, and I'm gonna link to that playlist below so you can go and check out which of those is coming up and if you whether you should attend. With all of these events, it's about getting out there and meeting people and networking. And I know as introverts, it can be super awkward. You don't know what to say to them, you don't know how to start a conversation. I definitely definitely push our course members and we play a game to help them go and meet more people. And usually at networking events, we try and meet 10 to 15 new people that you've not met before. But don't overthink it. It's very simple. Who are you and what do you do? They'll be more than happy to answer those questions.
when it comes to networking and building your network in the music industry, it's about using all the tools available. So online and offline networking and using all the platforms available and all the spaces available to try and meet as many people within the industry. Because remember, friends help friends. So get out there and start building your community. If you have any questions about networking, feel free to drop them in the comments or even let's use the comments section of this video to network with each other. Maybe drop where you're from, what you're trying to find or to who you're trying to network with. Maybe you want to collaborate with somebody. Drop your, what your purpose is and what you're trying to do. And let's use the comment section of this video to connect people and connect other DJs and producers. As I mentioned previously, I've created a playlist of all the best conferences and why you should attend conferences. So check that out here. I'm going to check that out next. Jump into one of those next. They're really going to help you with networking and growing your community. Don't forget to like this video. Let me know in the comments what you found useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I put out videos every single week to help DJs and producers get further in this industry from social media to growing your audience and growing your fan base. I've been Growing Farmer and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.